All right, we got a Volvo Penta raw water pump here and a rebuild kit. We're gonna show you how to rebuild this pump. Um, the rebuild kit comes with a new bearing, new impeller, seals, and replacement bolts. Um, to start this job, we, we already have this removed from the motor, but uh, you wanna remove the four bolts holding the impeller housing on. Those removed, you pull the impeller housing up. Impeller's in there. Try and get the bolts out. Then we're gonna just take this um, impeller out. Um, it easily pops out of the screwdriver just when you're doing it. Just be careful not to mar any of the edges. So we're gonna take that, set the impeller aside, set that aside. And next we need to remove the bearing housing. The bearing is on the back side of this and it's pressed onto the shaft. So you need a puller to do this. So we are going to set up a puller, pull this off. So that's set up. So with that removed, you can see on the back side, we have a bearing and then the snap ring holding the bearing in. Um, we're gonna remove the snap ring to get to the bearing. Now that we have the snap ring apart or off of it, we need to get a puller in here to pull this bearing out. You can see our puller has a little lips right here. You're gonna get on the underside of this and that's what's gonna grab the bearing and pull it out of the housing that's pressed in. Those snugged up. I'm gonna bring it over to the vise here just to help us hold it while we mess with this. That's down there. You're gonna take a wrench and just start to turn it. And you can see our bearing starting to come up. It's being pulled out of there. All right. Set that aside. Now the bearing's out. We can press the seal out of this. Tough, so we're gonna get a screwdriver, just pop it out, set that aside. And what we're gonna do is set up pounding the new bearing in, um, which can cause damage to the bearing because we don't have a press here, which most people don't have a press at home. What you can do is, without the seal in it, the new seal, you can heat this up. And with this heated up, we put our new bearing in a freezer a few hours ago. The bearing is going to be cold and smaller, and when we heat this up, this is going to expand. And ideally, the new bearing, when we take it out of the freezer after this is heated, will just drop right into place. No pounding, no nothing. Hopefully, no damage could possibly be caused by having to pound it in. Um, so I'm going to go get the bearing out of the freezer. We got our bearing out of the freezer. It should be contracted a little bit. What we're going to do is take this bearing housing real quick and just clean up this inner race. You can use emery paper. We got a little steel wool here. Just clean out any crud that could have been on there. That smoothed up. Set it here on our vise. 
and I'm gonna take a torch and heat evenly all around the edge of this. Like I mentioned before, the idea is to have this metal expand and the cold bearing contract and hopefully the bearing will just drop right into place without having to whack it, without having to pound on it, causing possible damage to it. that heated, if I can drop this bearing in there square, it should just fall right in. And there it is, it's all the way seated. And uh, before we put it, now that it's hot, what we're gonna do is I have a bucket of water here, we're just gonna cool it down while I go into putting any seals on it. Now well, that's cooled down, we are going to put the snap ring back in that holds that bearing in place just so it can't come out of there during use. Take our snap ring. Yeah, we got a new snap ring in this kit as well. So, now that I have this opened up, we'll take our new snap ring and install that in the groove. Keep it all held in there. Sure it's seated properly. There it is. Alright. Some people prefer to install this seal first and this seal. Um, I like to wait until after we get this back on the housing, just so I know I'm not gonna mess it up. Um, for this next step, I've got a large socket that'll fit over this, and I can use a hammer to pound this all the way down until it's seated. Um, like I said, if you have a press, you don't have to pound on it. Um, most homeowners don't, so this is your best option. So what I'm gonna do is take this down to the ground. It's a little more solid here. Put this socket over it, and you're gonna pound it, give it a couple wax, and you'll feel it when it firmly seats all the way down. It's not gonna go any farther. So here you go. Firmly seated all the way down. Set that on there. We're going to take our O ring. I've just got a little W4 and just lubricate this really quick. Just so we don't do any damage to it. And we're popping it in this. Press that down there. Put that on there. And then take this next seal. Still got a little oil on the fingers. Lube that up. up. Just slide this over the shaft. Just press it down there. Uh, 
I'm going to get a socket to push over that. Firmly press it down, make sure I get it all the way seated. Socket there. Push down, you can see it's all the way seated there. Next, we are going to take our new impeller out of the kit. And I'm going to just give this a little spray. Get a little lubed up and a little slick. And obviously this doesn't fit. It's going to squeeze in there. You kind of got to get it in there at an angle and start it. And just spin it as you push it down. Put that in there. And I'm almost done. I'm just going to take that and slide this back down around the shaft. We got these to line up on the first try. Sometimes, you know, these only go one way. They won't line up every way. Um, you just gotta spin it around until you get to the right spot where all four holes line up. And then you're simply gonna install your new bolts. See here, they're not cooperating. This one's tough to get to. I'm just going to run these down finger tight to start with. and tight so you get a good seal. And our water pump has been rebuilt. It's good to go.